as we go through. So anyway, I'm going to, um, without further ado, just um, start the, the session this morning for creating a pipeline uh, for the tech talent for the region. And welcome to uh, the inaugural Tech Swindon Summit. Uh, tech Swindon was uh, formed to highlight the scale, diversity and breadth of our tech community here in Swindon and in North Wiltshire. In Swindon, we have a hub of corporate employers, including Intel, Zurich, Nationwide, National Trust, WH Smith, and on, plus a thriving uh, SME sector altogether with 9,000 people work in our region, which historically has not been very well known. My name is uh, Tim Major, and I'm here. I'm the permanent representative of the Swindon Chamber of Commerce, which is part of the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce group. Uh, my role is to support all our members and businesses and build uh, up business connections across the region and develop a network that will lead to a long-term uh, community. I'm delighted that uh, Swindon Chamber can be part of the 25 sessions this week for uh, Tech Swindon, uh, running across the themes of uh, tech, talent, innovation, and business uh, resilience. Um, we've seen speakers from Roy Withy King, BT, Digi uh, and Digital, British Computer Society, the list goes on. Sessions to help you start uh, business, think internationally, deep tech dives, and we end with a mental health uh, uh, webinar where we just need to look after ourselves. Um, and also we have Techies uh, tonight as part of the Swindon and Wiltshire Tech Awards to celebrate and the highlights of our business commun tech community across the year. If you have missed them, as I mentioned earlier, recordings of all the events will be sent out. And thanks to the sponsors like uh, Royds, Willie King and Swindon Borough Council. Anyway, without further ado, education in Swindon um, has and is being revolutionised across the area. And we've seen the merger of Swindon and New College this summer. Additionally, Swindon has been chosen as one of the 12 locations for the government's new institutes of technology. And I'm delighted to welcome today, because you're not going to hear much from me, but pleased to know, uh, Carol Kitchen, Principal of the new Combined New College Swindon. Lynn Plested, the Vice Principal of Higher Education and Curriculum. Caroline Maycock, Business Development Manager and Employment uh, Engagement Manager. And Chris Beige, the Vice Principal of Employer Engagement. Without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Carol. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, very pleased that you're, you're here this morning and have got the opportunity to talk to you about um, what's been happening um, on the skills and training landscape here in Swindon. And I think it's been particularly pertinent that today, uh, which we absolutely didn't know when this was planned, is the first day of the the second lockdown and once again millions of people find themselves working, shopping and socialising online, which just brings home yet again just how critical the development of digital skills in the widest sense are to the future of our country. As Tim said, um, this summer saw the merger um, after many years of Swindon College and New College. And we believe that this is the, the, the start of a, a significant change to the skills and training landscape in Swindon uh, and the wider region um, over the coming months. The merger aimed to deliver a really wide range of benefits to the community. And for me, further education colleges um, are absolutely at the heart of the community. And I'm passionate about the transformational work that colleges like New College do um, to enhance and develop the lives of, of so many people. Probably over the last 10 years, um, the two colleges, both um, independently and now together, have touched the lives of more than 50,000 people. Um, and I think we can see that from the number of people who return to, to work at the college. The merger of the college um, has resulted in an organisation now, which is one of the, the biggest um, employers in Swindon with over 600 staff, uh, 38 million pound turnover and over 7,000 students um, studying on a whole range of programmes and a whole range of levels. 
The college is already training over 1,500 apprentices, and we're really excited about the future developments um, in that area in particular that, that Caroline's going to talk about in a bit more detail later. The mergers also meant that we've been able to create the most comprehensive curriculum offer uh, for at least 50 miles. And I think that's something that's um, of huge benefit to Swindon and the region to have such a wide range of full-time and part-time training um, in the area. So we're offering over 150 different courses and qualifications, including degrees. And I think when, when I talk to people about colleges, everybody understands what a school is and everybody understands what a university is, but people find it really hard to pin down what it is that colleges do. And I, I think one of the reasons for that is that colleges do um, almost everything. We take students from um, entry level where they're just starting out on education right through to degree level. Um, and we're very, very keen to promote parity of esteem with academic qualifications such as GCSEs and A-levels, technical and vocational qualifications, which all give such valid roots. The kind of the range of courses we have inc already include um, a significant number of, of, of digital courses. Um, we've got young people who are uh, moving into careers in the digital skills range in the, in the widest sense. Next year, we're starting a national diploma in esports. Uh, we've seen a big increase in interest in gaming, um, as well as apprenticeships in things such as software engineers and a foundation degree in cybersecurity. Unlike the, um, the recent government ad, we don't actually believe that all our trainee dancers and health professionals are all going to retrain in cybersecurity, uh, but at least we do offer the option for, for that if that's what people want to do. One thing that's becoming increasingly clear, and I think if you've worked in a college, it's been clear for a long time, but now it's been much clearer um, to the government and, and across the, the, the country, is that further education colleges are key to building back economic recovery. We've seen recent government policy and investment underpinning this. Um, and the success of that, if colleges are to build back economic recovery and support our community, key to that is the close relationship between employers and the college. And this is an area of work that we're already engaged in, but we are really keen to work more closely with more employers big employers and SMEs, and to really hear from you um, about what your needs are and what you think your, your, future, your future needs are going to be as well. Colleges, I think, are the engine room of economic recovery and development, preparing young people for the world of work and those important soft skills that employers like yourselves tell us are so important, as well as the technical skills. And increasingly, and in the very difficult circumstances that we find ourselves, upskilling and reskilling adults and a focus on jobs that don't even exist yet. The merger has enabled a one stop shop for employers with the, the, the range of programmes that we offer. And we hope that that helps bring some clarity to what is sometimes quite a confused landscape of training offers. And we're proud to be able to offer industry standard training facilities and dual professional staff, so staff who are qualified to teach and assess, as well as being qualified in their, their technical and industrial areas. As you know, and one of the reasons you're here this morning is because work is about to commence um, on the college's Institute of Technology, um, another major step in revolutionising the skills offer available in the region. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Lynn Plested, Vice Principal for Curriculum and Higher Education, uh, to talk to you more about what the Institute of Technology is um, and the offer that it's going to bring. So I'll hand over to Lynn now. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, yes, this morning I'm going to talk about the uh, Swindon and Wiltshire Institute of Technology. And what uh, I think we need to do is start off with explaining what an Institute of Technology is. Um, more generally, and then kind of hone in on ours in more detail. 
So Institute of Technologies are the name of a new type of provider. Um, and it's just really uh, an education focused establishment that is designed to deliver um, STEM skills. So when we're talking about STEM, we're talking about science, technology, engineering and maths. This is a national model. There's about 12 um, already agreed uh, in the UK. And there's a second wave of um, bids that are, are due to start or have just started. Um, IOTs are collaborative models. Um, they um, combine a, a range of um, FE and HE institutions and employers. So in our context, we've got University of Gloucestershire as our HE provider. There's uh, New College Swindon ourselves and Siren Sister College as FE um, providers. But our range of employers um, uh, include Nationwide, BMW, Recycling Technologies, Catalent, Apps Broker, Excalibur Communications and Create Studios as anchor partners in the IoT. These aren't new institutions, they're really a group of partners coming together to form a new partnership to kind of serve the local higher level skills agenda uh, uh, locally. They're designed to be um, kind of regional sub-regional scale rather than kind of purely local, but clearly this will serve the Swindon and Webshire LEP area, but also along uh, the M4 corridor and surrounding areas. Um, we're located um, by the train station in Swindon and clearly we're very close to the M4 as well. So ideally situated to attract uh, people uh, with easy access. Um, IOTs have specialism in higher level technical skills and 70% of the plan provision would be at level four or level five. So that in context is the first or second year of a degree course and 20% at level six, which would be the third year of, of a degree course and only kind of 10% at the level three level, which is a kind of a level equivalent level. So uh, we focus on STEM based subjects um, and most plant provision in ITs is relating to engineering and manufacturing, digital pathways and construction. There's also some cover coverage of life sciences and health related disciplines. And later in the presentation, I'll talk a bit more closely about the curriculum offer um, that, that we're presenting. Um, out of the five priority sectors of the Local Enterprise uh, Partnership, um, four are covered by the Institute of Technology, um, the, the uh, STEM subjects that have kind of been described there. Uh, it's only at land based that the, the IoT won't be covering. So it's employer led provision that is tailored and responsive to the needs of employers in their areas. So what's our vision then? What do we want to create and why do we want to create it? Well, we want people to come and study high level skills with us um, in Swindon. And over the five year, uh, next five years, the, the kind of occupancy and the kind of number of students that we would have in the IOT would reach up to just over a thousand. So um, it's really quite a significant kind of um, plan uh, to, to raise the level of skills uh, here locally. Now, the Swindon Wiltshire LEP is uh, one of the only LEPs in the country without a university, and that has a number of uh, issues um, created for us. Um, first of all, local people, that means that local people move away to study. And when people do that, they don't always come back to the area which they originated from. So that's kind of one area we're kind of losing talent out of the area. And the other issue is um, that we have um, uh, low aspiration to study at a higher level in Swindon. Uh, Swindon is a cold spot for higher education. And although Wiltshire is better, the number of learners that progress from level three um, into a higher level uh, education is 10 to 15% lower than the national rates. And although the national um, progression from level three has improved over the last few years, uh, we're still staying kind of stubbornly low in this area. So, you know, those, those factors contribute to us losing talent and not attracting kind of talent into the area. We know that work um, by the local enterprise partnership and uh, our local market intelligence, that uh, it's identified that employee needs are changing and that high level skills are the skills that are needed. Um, and that is to, uh, you know, to, to kind of meet the forecast growth in new skills and new roles that are needed but also to help replace um, a retiring and aging workforce. Um, the other kind of uh, uh, goal of the, the IOT is to kind of help raise social mobility as well. 
And we know that underrepresented groups, think, uh, students like disabled, disadvantaged students, care leavers, um, uh, students from military families, they, um, and, and residents that perhaps haven't progressed uh, directly to university um, in that kind of traditional university routes, those types of people are more likely to study and stay locally, especially if there are good employment opportunities. So um, in terms of the IOT, uh, it's all about providing high quality training to get people into skilled technical employments uh, locally. And the curriculum is designed by employers for them, really. We've got a kind of target market that we're looking for, but it's kind of a number of different types of people. So we've got uh, to be able to attract young people into these um, high level skills. We might have um, markets of people who are changing careers. So they're kind of um, uh, in the current kind of economic climate needing to look for uh, a different career path, but also uh, candidates that are upskilling within a company or reskilling within a company. Um, so we know that um, at, at the moment, particularly with the uh, kind of forced kind of lockdown and changes in, in the way that uh, businesses are operating, um, that some roles or, or some roles are not needed in the quantity that they were and that organisations um, can reskill those uh, uh, employees rather than make them redundant, which is obviously a much more positive intervention. So we've got, you know, full time models, part time models, day release models and blended learning approaches to kind of meet the needs of all of these different target markets and help uh, employers bridge the skills gap. So in terms of um, courses, um, says kind of early in the presentation, you know, predominant curriculum is at level four and higher. So that kind of first year of degree uh, right the way up to um, kind of level seven. Uh, so we've got courses for school leavers, but they're going to be the level three apprenticeship pathways and study programs that are going to prepare them with the academic skills and kind of base knowledge that is going to prepare them for that higher level study in, in the future. But the key market here with the IOT is for the 18, 19 plus adult market. Um, and whilst we've got, you know, kind of uh, advanced apprenticeships at level three as part of the IOT curriculum offer, We've also got high apprenticeships, so high apprenticeships qualifying the people to level fours and five. Degree apprenticeships, where we've got um, a degree integrated into the apprenticeship standard. They might last three or four years to, uh, in terms of study. And that's an ideal way um, for uh, people to study and gain a degree without kind of incurring the kind of debt that, that comes with uh, studying um, kind of at university, so they're earning while they're learning, but getting to that degree uh, level. We also have um, HE and undergraduates courses, so that would be things like foundation degrees, high national uh, diplomas and certificates, but also uh, bachelor degrees, bachelor of science degrees and, and things like that as part of the offer. And then we've got our CPD uh, courses, uh, things like project managers, so smaller, punchier courses that are going to kind of meet a particular need uh, for for a, a, an individual or an employer um, in, in terms of a gap in their knowledge or, or skills. So let's have a look um, in, a, in a bit more detail about the kind of pathways that we're offering. So you can see on the screen the curriculum pathways that uh, we have in planning and development at the moment um, and were kind of uh, initially um, part of the bid for the Institute of Technology. In the digital and computer science pathway um, we've got uh, courses within this pathway that are going to prepare people for roles such as network engineer, software developer, cybersecurity technologist, data analyst, to name a few. Um, and also under this um, uh, area, we have um, six different programmes uh, that are part of the University of Gloucestershire Flying Faculty. Now, what's a flying faculty, I hear you ask? Uh, well, that means that a uh, University of Gloucestershire will be delivering their degrees uh, with their staff using the IoT premises. So people can study uh, right up to level six um, with the flying, well, level seven actually with the fly, uh, flying faculty. And to give a flavor of some of the courses in, the, in those six, there's applied artificial intelligence and computer games design uh, as part of those, of those programs. 
So that's the kind of digital and computer science kind of curriculum. For the creative and media professions, um, we've got courses here um, looking at kind of web development, but also media production coordinator and post-production technical operator. So um, a kind of a range of uh, creative um, uh, and media options there, uh, and also a kind of photographic assistance uh, apprenticeship as well there. For business and management, uh, we've got a HND uh, in business. Uh, we've got the level seven engineering control management, which is um, one of the flying faculty courses with the University of Gloucestershire. But also we've got uh, in the kind of second year of the IOT, the chartered general manager uh, being developed. And uh, in that sector kind of lies uh, the project management type courses that I was mentioning earlier. For engineering and manufacturing, which we've already got a kind of rich uh, experience of uh, delivering uh, at North Star already, um, we've got pathways in general engineering, manufacturing engineering, electronic engineering, and civil engineering. And we've also got construction and built environment as part of that as well. So a range of different engineering and manufacturing pathways uh, leading right up to level seven. Uh, in the science and healthcare, um, some of the healthcare comes on a, a little bit later, but uh, next year we'll have our technician scientists, um, uh, higher apprenticeship there, which is at uh, levels four and five, uh, but also uh, coming uh, in the future, our healthcare science associate and uh, assistant practitioner. So you can kind of get a flavour for the roles. That's not all of the curriculum. That's just a flavour of the kind of key um, key parts of each of those course, uh, course sectors that you can see on the, on the screen. So where is all this going to happen? Um, well, we're really excited by the kind of multi-million pound refurbishment and development of some of the existing buildings on the North Star site of New College Swindon. And this development um, is worth about £21 million. Uh, it's um, going to deliver us state-of-the-art engineering workshops, uh, digital labs, um, a film studio and science labs, as well as kind of lecture spaces and seminar spaces that we need to deliver um, the, the curriculum. But also it will have kind of informal study spaces for students, um, some sort of social space uh, and collaboration space, but also kind of learning resource center areas. Um, it also um, has a collaboration space for employer partners. So with that might be where, where they would use it to recruit their ex, uh, apprentices from. They might do uh, training there themselves. Uh, there's room for research collaboration. Um, so there's that, that space for the employers to be um, part of the kind of day-to-day -day operation of, of that um, Institute of Technology. So we've got some um, artist impressions uh, available for us to have a look at. Um, so in that kind of top left hand um, a picture as you, as you see it, uh, Chris is nicely putting the cursor around the kind of area of development. So that's uh, those of you that may be familiar with our site, we've got a, a seven storey building called the Pegasus Tower. And uh, the left hand side and top uh, level of that becomes part of the IoT and our Corvus building on the, on the left there, which is where our main engineering curriculum is um, focused at the moment. Uh, will also be refurbished and, and become part of the IOT. And you can see some lovely um, uh, designs there. Um, these are artists' impressions of what the, the space will look like. These are mainly communal, communal spaces, the kind of social spaces, the reception areas, um, and kind of uh, informal study areas uh, that are available um, for um, the, the students and users of the Institute of Technology. And as you see, it will be a really fresh, up-to-date environment ideal for study, collaboration and research. Um, it's really exciting to see this coming together. So how is this going to um, benefit um, the region? Well, to summarise, um, the project will develop and enhance the availability of high level um, skills uh, available locally, uh, giving people the opportunity to have high quality uh, education. Um, it will allow businesses to get the skills that they need that will help improve productivity locally, but also attract businesses to the area. It will allow enhanced social ability. So with high level skills come um, better jobs and hopefully enhanced pay. 
and that will keep people here and attract people to the area. We know as a country that um, you know we've got kind of uh, Brexit and COVID that we're trying to kind of deal with at the moment. And um, we know that the, you know, COVID particularly has kind of caused that impetus to change to be much more rapid. Uh, we know that the 18 to 24 year olds have been adversely affected and uh, mostly kind of by COVID. So, and they're part of our target market. But really, you know, we uh, as an IOT in a college um, have, uh, you know, the, the expertise to get people back into the right work, um, getting, uh, get them up to the skills level that required uh, and, and to do that quickly. Um, so that's, that's the benefits for the region. So, I mean, this exciting project is in full flow. Um, the building, uh, some kind of preparation work is kind of already uh, about to begin, but the building work proper starts in January. Uh, the curriculum development is happening now. Um, I'm, I'm speaking to employers um, all of the time and working with them to, to develop that curriculum. Um, so if you um, have any comments or you want to make a contribution or you want any further information on the IOT, then please do get into contact. We'd love to hear from employers uh, and, and get uh, a you know, wider range of employees involved in building that curriculum. Um, so please contact us. You can see the, the email address there on the screen. Of course, at the end of our kind of combined presentation, there'll be the opportunity for any of you to ask questions. Uh, and if you have any, just drop them into the uh, chat box. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, Caroline Maycock, who's the business development manager at Nucleus Swindon. Uh, and she's going to talk to you about how you can access funding to develop your workforce's digital skills. So over to you, Carol. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, thank you, Lynn, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you again for joining us today. As Lynn said, my name is Caroline Maycock, and I'm res responsible for promoting apprenticeships with New College. So apprenticeships are genuine jobs which combine on-the-job skills training and off-the-job learning. Personally, I feel very fortunate to be able to assist with promoting something that I truly believe in and passionate with apprenticeships and the benefits that they can bring to both businesses and individuals themselves. These benefits can include things such as bringing fresh talent to your organisation, upskilling existing employees, help them to fill those skills gaps within your organisation. And in return, this can result in a highly motivated and ambitious workforce, which will increase your productivity and ensuring continued growth to meet the needs of your organisation. As an apprentice, individuals themselves will benefit from gaining valuable work experience opportunities and developing their skills further with continuous learning while um, earning a wage. As an employer, it can also help by promoting your organisation as a great place to work, great for your corporate social responsibility and working together within the community. So as Lynn said, one of the things I'll be talking about today is accessing funding to support and develop um, your, your business. So in 2017, the uh, government made a pledge to recruit 3 million apprentices by introducing the apprenticeship levy system. And this was to help drive the economy by stimulating business growth. What that essentially means is to those employers who have a uh, payroll bill in excess of three million pounds, they are required to pay a percentage each month into the digital pot, which will pay for their apprenticeships. For non-levy employers, so those with less than a three million payroll bill, they receive a 95% co-funding from the government, which will help towards the cost of their apprenticeship training. Therefore, you only contribute 5%. However, for those employers who are non-levy, so less than three million payroll bill, who employ fewer than 50 people, um, the government will help further if you employ someone aged between 16 and 18, or 19 to 24 with an educational healthcare plan, the government will fully fund your apprenticeship training, which is great news. However, you will all be responsible for paying their wages. So the government support through incentives that is available to you. So all employers, irrespective of uh, whether they're levy or non-levy, if you employ an apprentice aged 16 to 18 or 19 to 24 with an educational healthcare plan, you'll receive a further £1,000 government incentive, which will help towards the cost of training. 
This will help for those that either have associated costs because they're young, um, they're young people or someone with additional learning support. In addition, you may be aware that due to COVID, the Chancellor announced as part of his plan for jobs back in the summer, the new incentives that are made available to employers. Um, and basically, this is to help stimulate growth and to get employers to start thinking about recruiting apprentices and not leaving it too late. So from August this year, which is obviously already passed, through to the end of January, uh, which is 31st January, you could be entitled to further incentives. And that is an extra £2,000 for those aged 16 to 24, or uh, 1,500 for those that are aged 25 plus. That's in addition to the original 1,000 pound incentive. The only caveat is that you must not have employed those apprentices, so they must be new and they haven't worked for you in the preceding six months, so generating new opportunities. So just to give you an example, so if you're a non-levy paying employer, so your wage bill is less than three million, you um, recruit, you employ less than 50 employees and you recruit somebody, an apprentice aged 18, you will um, not only have the cost of your apprenticeship fully funded by the government, you'll receive £3,000 in government incentives, which is a fantastic opportunity for your business and a way the government's trying to drive this growth. So next slide, please, Chris. So going back to my role, when I first engage with employers, my main aim is to understand their business training needs and to provide advice and guidance on the appropriate training solutions that we can deliver. Once I identify that need, um, I can then provide a more comprehensive overview of what an apprenticeship is, what programmes available, the delivery, duration, and what your responsibilities will be contributing to that apprentice. There's other things that we can do in terms of support and, and basically it's so flexible, it can be as much or as little as you need. Um, so following that meeting, identifying your training needs and giving that overview, we can assist with the completion of the paperwork. Again, from the meeting, I would gain all that information and I can pre-populate all the paperwork for you, send it over and basically it's a case of checking it and signing, sending back because I appreciate that businesses are very busy these days and it can be daunting filling out paperwork, especially if you're new to this kind of apprenticeship system. With our recruitment process, we can advertise the role through the National Apprenticeship website. Um, and again, we can do as much or as little depending on your needs. Some of our employers like us just to advertise and send all applications over. Others like us to do all the pre-screening, check eligibility, make sure that those apprentices meet your minimum criteria that you've set when, when recruiting. And then we submit those applications over as we have a dedicated recruitment consultant who will follow that through from beginning through to successful completion. We also can help with providing how-to information on uh, the digital account, which you will need to set up if you are going to access the additional funding and incentives. Um, we can provide how-to support, or again, we can sit with you and set up that system. Again, support ranges there and flexible to your needs. Your apprentice will receive excellent training from our expert tutors and industry-led assessors, who again will work closely with you throughout the throughout the whole program, right through to successful completion. We do encourage regular feedback and reviews between employers, apprentices and the college. And I feel it's very vital to have that communication regular and it to be honest. It's, it not only helps ensure that we're meeting your needs now, but we can talk about your future and your business and look at, at the programs for your future talent pipeline. Thanks, Chris. So as this week is dedicated to Tech Swindon, um, we have over 40 different apprenticeships that we currently offer, but here's an overview of some of our digital apprenticeships. Um, taking the top one for, for example, Digital Martin at level three, just to explain, the £11,000 is the funding band, and as a levy paying employer, that would be your contribution as you pay out of your levy pot. The 5% of 550 is if you're a non-levy paying employer. So it's great value for money. Um, these courses are all day release, which are um, a great way to satisfy some of that 20% of the job training that's required within the apprenticeship programme. Just want to mention at this time, these programmes, uh, traditionally, I think people sometimes think that apprenticeships only begin in September. We're flexible with our delivery and we have certain entry points throughout the year. So you're not geared and just limited to that September start. So again, another example of flexible training. 
the next slide, please. Um, so just really want to finish off by saying that New College will be hosting an event in February, um, in, which will coincide with Apprenticeship Week. It will be regarding the digital system and how to reserve your funds and claim those incentives. If this is something you'd like to attend or wish to discuss uh, generally about apprenticeships, then please do get in touch. Um, you can connect with me by phone, email or on LinkedIn. Um, and as Chris said, um, sorry, Tim said earlier, these slides will be um, distributed. So you'll have my contact details there again. I'll be happy to meet anybody um, at your convenience, virtually or otherwise. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, everybody. That was excellent. I have some questions coming in, actually coming in on my email as well as uh, up through the chat box. And so people are organised. And I think I think partially the first question has been, I think, covered off by Lynn earlier. But just to, I guess it's a, a sign of enthusiasm, hopefully. Um, I'm an employer. How can I get involved um, with the IOT between now and its opening in 2021? Well, um, in terms of how you can get employed, uh, involved at the moment, there's kind of two sides to that. The first side is in the development of the curriculum. So I'd love to have uh, more people to consult with and make sure that the curriculum um, pathways and design that we're putting together meets the needs of um, the, the local uh, employers. Um, so if you'd like to get involved in, in that, then if you drop uh, a line into the, um, the SORT IoT address that's in the... Um, in the in the, in the pack, uh, in the slide pack, <laughs> then uh, you can do so. Um, and also, if you're interested in, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, signing up uh, uh, apprentices or kind of uh, have future um, kind of demands uh, for apprentices or um, opportunities to upskill uh, your employees, you know, by other kind of routes rather than apprenticeships, then just get in touch with myself and Caroline and. Uh, we can talk through what the options are uh, and you know in, in some cases we can actually get you started straight away so you saw in Caroline's um, uh, presentation that we already do some of the lines that are going into the IOT um, already so um, yeah get in touch if you want to, if you're interested in either taking part in uh, supporting with the curriculum uh, and helping us shape the vision then um, please get in touch or if you're wanting to um, engage uh, your employees with with um, you know the education we can provide then get in touch with myself or Caroline and, and, okay. and, we'll and when I guess as a sort of a follow-on question to that when will mm -hmm. be the the new curriculum uh be available um the curriculum comes in waves so um majority of the curriculum I've talked about today will come um in um in September 2021 uh, some comes in 22 uh, and so on however uh, if you're kind of interested, it's worth talking to us right now because there are pathways that we already kind of, um, you know, can in, certainly in gen, uh, engineering and digital pathways that we always, uh, we will also already have um, some of that curriculum up live and ready to go at the moment. Perfect. Thank you. And a question coming in through the chat, you know, talk, and I have to say praising uh, what, what you're doing there. And it's very exciting to see. How do you think the IOT will help develop the tech se sector in Swindon particularly? I think um, it will help um, to uh, provide a pipeline of talent um, and that will then uh, also help um, those existing businesses but also um, attract businesses to the area so if, if, if businesses know that they can um, get um, the right talent and skills that they need um, and obviously the location in Swindon is great in terms of its kind of M4 corridors kind of status and its proximity to London, Bristol and so on. Um, so I think it will help not only provide a pipeline of uh, employees that are equipped with the right skills for those industries, but also uh, attract more of that type of industry into the area. And actually a very good question. Sorry, Chris. I'd just like to add, sorry, I haven't said anything, so I thought I'd add, add something to that answer, if that's okay. I think one of the, um, and sorry, I haven't introduced myself yet, but um, I'm responsible for um, 
business development and employer engagement. I think one of the things that's really crucial to the IoT that sets it apart from from other um, training is that collaboration that's happened along the way with um, employers to actually develop the curriculum. So I've I've attended lots and lots of um, feedback meetings where they've been actively involved in shaping the content of what's being offered, looking at the add-on um, skills as well. So, for example, project management was a was an area that um, employers had fed back should be crucial to, to many of the programmes. So I think that collaboration and actually having a space for collaboration within the institution itself is uh, something that's quite unique and exciting for us. It means that people can be involved right along the way and also once we get into the delivery phase. So I think that's that's a really exciting way of, of developing education. Yeah, exactly. And I'm and I, and I thinking, and this is sort of leads neat, neatly into the next question, actually, I wasn't quite expecting, but I guess the IoT, the combined uh, new college now, gives the area a different perspective, because we've got a, uh, a business member of the, the chamber who has extensive links uh, through the Middle East and Africa, and he's saying, are you considering, uh, say, an exchange program or some sort of partnerships in the region? Might be a bit of off the wall, that one, but maybe, as I say, the, suddenly the IOT gives a new perspective to, to the region and the world, hopefully. Maybe if I, if I can pick that one up. I think we're right at the beginning of this journey and the more employers we talk to, uh, the greater the potential and possibilities for the IOT are. So I think you know, this kind of development is exactly the sort of thing that we're interested in, in talking to employers about. Um, the, 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 the Institutes of Technology um, had you know, quite a simple base to their initial construction, but they, it's taking on a, a real life of its own. And it's, you know, we are shaping that and constantly reshaping it in light of the feedback we're getting and I think the idea of being able to expand that and I think probably um, particularly sort of over the last few months we've seen the huge potential um, to partner remotely as well as physically to expand people's horizons um, and, and to bring in other aspects and other talent we've really seen that develop so I think that's a kind of really kind of really interesting thing that we'd like to talk to employers about um and and you know how that would work for them and how we could support that um because this is the institute of technology you know it doesn't belong to the college it belongs to the employers and the community um so really keen to to hear more about those those ideas perfect so I'll, I'll arrange for that in, introduction um but i suppose one question that's, that's coming through is obviously day one of, of lockdown. Um, have you adapted the delivery of what you do during this COVID period from working from home? I'll pick that one up, um, Tim. Um, I think it's, there's two parts to that answer, really. Uh, firstly, um, just in general terms, as you'll know, the government's been very keen to keep education settings open. And um, I have to say, I've been absolutely amazed by the, the resilience and, and pace of upskilling that's, that's happened with our tutors and our assessors in a very short time. So um, we were up and running with remote learning immediately after the March lockdown. We introduced a, a sort of um, quite a big uh, upskilling programme for all of our lecturers and assessors and as it continues um, we are now um, continuing to be able to offer so all of our sessions are actually live streamed so while we've got learners in the classroom we also have people that are uh, through our timetable where we are managing um, group sizes and social distancing and so on we've got um, people attending remotely live as well as those in the classroom so but for apprentices, more specifically, um, we've got an e-portfolio system, which um, allows our assessors and our trainers to deliver sessions through the system itself, uh, through video conference, through a sort of Teams plugin. And um, we can also make sure that all work and um, assignments are shared through this e-portfolio system. They can be assessed remotely uh, and uh, assessment of activities can happen remotely as well. And the government have made some adjustments to uh, some of the flexibilities in how things are assessed and, and uh, reviewed um, through the system. 
And I have to say, we've had excellent levels of continuity and engagement from our students. We really couldn't have asked for, and our apprentices, obviously, we really couldn't have asked for any more. And uh, I think it's a real sort of testament to, to the sector and to, uh, to New College itself for the commitment of staff and our students to just keep things going. So um, it, 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 although it has had an impact, uh, we have seen a reduction in starts with apprenticeships. Those uh, people that are on programmes have continued and continue to be supported and continue to be achieved to, to achieve. And actually our achievement rates of, of apprenticeships have not vastly changed as they would have been in a in a normal situation. So so we've we've done brilliantly and, and that's about our staff and, and their commitment as well as our apprentices and our employers too. Um, and we've also been providing a lot of extra support to those um, employers, giving them advice on how to support their apprentices remotely. Um, and We've also been doing quite a lot with um, the sort of pastoral support side. So we've got a, a whole team of pastoral support tutors who also check in on well-being and have upped their level of contact with those apprentices remotely as well. So a really combined, uh, solid team effort to keep things going, I think. I suppose that's what a, a lot of employers ask, is it Chris and, and Caroline? about, you know, if they are, you know, what's their responsibilities to a, an apprentice? Yeah, sure. I mean, I can pick that one up. I mean, the main things that we say to employers as, as roles and responsibilities to them, because it is a burning question, is to ensure that it's, um, the role is a genuine job that offers that training within the apprenticeship and make sure that the role meets with the standard so they're able to provide the evidence um, of learning and meet the criteria for the endpoint assessment that they will need to go to, to successful completion. The other things that are helpful, again, especially at these times, um, is to provide um, a mentor or buddy, someone else that's not necessarily work related, but somebody they can talk to if they've got any other questions or things they're not sure about. It's just providing that, again, additional support in these times or, or any time really. Um, a crucial thing is the 20% off the job learning, the training time that's required. It's making sure that the employers take that into consideration when they're looking at the role that the person's going to be employed to do. With some of our, or with a, a large proportion of our apprenticeships, it is day release. So that will fulfill that criteria. Um, however, some of, some of the apprenticeships we deliver are one-to-one -one in the workplace. So in those times, it's, it's making sure that employers have allocated that time for them to conduct their learning and to complete any assignments or create portfolios. Again, it doesn't have to be that they're not in the workplace. They can be in the workplace. It's just setting that time aside. And again, it's, it's all flexible. It's on average one day a week, but um, that can be done, like I say, on a day or a block or certain hours throughout throughout the week it, it's really it is flexible and with the assessors when they meet with the employers it's all done on an e-portfolio everything's recorded so again that will be extra support to say you know let's think about that 20 percent. what else have you been doing have you logged that because it's a, it's a crucial part of the apprenticeship it's um it's also allowing those assessors to meet with the apprentice and the line manager because there are again minimum criteria in terms of those meetings taking place to fulfill the reviews and make sure that everything's on program and everyone's happy and satisfied so it's given that access to them making time for those assessors to come in to conduct that part of the role and, and again um, just to reiterate regular com uh, communication and feedback it's so important um, to, to have that because by doing so you can if they're if there are any issues or questions, you know, that, that communication can nip those in the bird or, or adapt if there's something that needs adapting that's not working for that particular individual or employer, then it gives her the opportunity to look at different options. Perfect, thank you. Caroline, uh, that, uh, no further uh, questions. So thank you, panel, for answering that. Whether, uh, Carol, you want to, uh, finish our webinar today with any final thoughts as we approach the end of the year and into uh, 2021. Yeah, thank, thank, thanks, Tip. I'd just like to, you know, to say to, to, to all employers that um, the College and the Institute of Technology is here for you. It is your college, it is your Institute of Technology. Um, we want to hear from as many employers as possible. We'd like um, to engage with you, not just about the development of the curriculum, um, but about other aspects of um, the, the, 
what we're doing with students as well. Uh, please do get in contact with us. Uh, we're very, very, very keen to, to have conversations with you and the success of the, the future for, for, for you know, training of skills in Swindon and the region is absolutely dependent on that relationship with you. So please get in contact. Uh, thank you for attending today um, and stay safe through these difficult times. Thank you very much, uh, Carol, uh, Lynn, Caroline and Chris for your contribution you. today is excellent. Thank you very much. And to everybody uh, on the call today, I'll be sending out the, uh, the slides uh, shortly, uh, as soon as I get the uh, recording and join it. But if you have any questions, um, you can see that uh, uh, we've got all the contact details in there. And, but otherwise, I'm happy to forward your direct, uh, questions directly to uh, Carol and the team after this. Um, finally, just uh, from me, um, the next, I would say the next Tech Swindon event is on in half an hour. So uh, that's with Rob Hempton, and I think he's uh, getting his VR goggles out next. And for, and for me, from the Swindon uh, Chamber of Commerce, I do regular uh, webinars such as, as this. My next uh, Swindon business session is next Friday, and you're all very welcome uh, to join me uh, for that hour when we join again by Zoom. But it just remains me to say exciting times for education and the college uh, in Swindon. Um, thank you for joining us. Thanks for the team and thanks for Tech Swindon to let us be part of this. I uh, wish you all a very, good, uh, a very good day. Thank you so much for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.